Oh, I'm glad you love it, Debbie. Yeah, I think it was, I was two when it came out, I think. I don't know. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's fun. Thank you for playing that. My pleasure. So uh, I'm Marla Wong. I'm Debbie Wong. And this is Real Times in Real Estate. And today we're going to talk about tips for uh, choosing an agent. And hopefully you don't want to choose a secret agent. Yeah, that would not be good. <laughs> you want somebody you know, who's going to be really good to represent you in probably the largest purchase of your life. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, Debbie, do you have any tips for us uh, or, you know, tricks or kind of guidance as to how to choose a real estate agent? Well, actually, I have a lot of tips, but I know that are, you know, I don't want to bore you guys and be here for thousands of hours, but I give you the three best ones that I think um, are really good uh, sort of guidance. So the first uh, tip that I have would be is, you know, when finding an agent is ask your friends and family if they know of someone that they had a really good experience with. Um, I think that's probably the, the best way to start. Mm -hmm. And also to, you know, when you're dealing with friends and family, they can tell you about their stories of success. So I think that's a really great way to start. Mm. How did you find your agent? Um, referral basis. <laughs> referral? I thought, well, you asked me if I was any good first. Or <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I, I used to like, um, do your transaction work. So I know you're a good agent, oh, but okay. when I bought my first place, I used Debbie, obviously. So yeah, I think yeah. that's kind of a given, you know, um, mother daughter team, if you don't use it. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so Debbie, do you remember buying your first place? Actually, I do remember my uh, buying my very first place. Um, I was about to have a baby, it's actually you, oh. and it was- It was only 18 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Um, but the, I remember thinking to myself, you know, I'd always dreamed of owning my own home and, or being a homeowner, and I thought, gosh, I have to do it before I have my first baby, or before I have a baby, I want to be a homeowner. So I was on a mission. And so as big as I was, I you know, go see property and I had a wonderful agent. She was very nice and I drove her absolutely insane. And I called her like every day, like mm, 12, familiar. 12,000 <laughs> times a day. You know, are we approved it? Is the loan good? Or... So poor thing, but she was very patient and she was um, actually a friend, a family friend. So it was a really good experience. and. So that's how I bought my first place. I was a homeowner, I think, in, by December, November, and then February, you came along. So it was uh, I was able to fulfill my goal. my dream, my goal. Your dream. Yeah. Do you still keep in touch with that agent? I do. Um, she I don't. She doesn't practice uh, full time any longer. Um, so she's uh, I guess semi retired now, but super super nice lady. Yeah, um, we do. So it seems like uh, when you choose an agent, it might even be like a lifelong relationship. Possibly. I mean, one of the things um, that I like to think is that uh, when I uh, meet a new client, that it is really a lifelong relationship. I hope to be part of their lives. I was part of their lives at a very important you know, part in maybe securing the first home or uh, their, their dream home. And yes, you know, oftentimes I get uh, calls from past customers that say, hey, you know, little Johnny's all grown up now and he's married and he has a kid on the way and he wants to buy his first house. So it's really great to see that. Um, we do hope to be agents for life. And when we have that experience, it, it really is uh, heartwarming. Hmm. So, um... What is your next tip for us for finding an agent? Well, so beyond uh, asking friends and family, you know, for a referral and asking them how their experience was, the second tip that I have for you is to select an agent that is familiar in the area that you want to make a purchase in. Um, because the inventory is very short, uh, we see a lot of agents, um, or convincing agents of late that maybe are from out of the area, try to represent people that are um, maybe outside of their regular service place. You know, like for example, we, we might see an agent from San Bernardino or something trying to sell mm -hmm. 
a property in San Mateo. That's and like very far from us. To yeah, it is miles. really far. <laughs> but we do we do see it from time to time occasionally, and I, I think you really, I think it's a disservice to the client. I think you really should be familiar with the place that uh, they're trying to make a purchase in, only because there may be certain things about the area um, that you might not know about unless you yourself live there. So, uh, for example, in when we sell properties, let's say in Foster City, uh, uh, we notice that a lot of, uh, there's a, a high number of school age children in the area, and a lot of them are, are little guys, you know, and they like to ride their bikes on the sidewalk. So that might be a piece of information um, that maybe an agent from out of the area might not know mm -hmm. that, hey, be careful pulling out because a lot there's a lot of little kids riding their bikes on the sidewalks. There's a lot of runners and joggers because we live near the SF uh, Bay Rec Trail. So important little pieces of information like that, I think is are very valuable. Um, so work with an agent that is familiar with the area that you want to make a purchase in. And um, how would you, like what questions would you ask an agent to see if they're familiar with that area? Well, I would ask them, you know, how many homes have you sold in this area or you or your brokerage sold in this area? And is there anything special that I need to know about this particular neighborhood over another city or neighborhood in the same price point that I want to look at? Mm -hmm. Like what's special and unique about this particular city over another? And a local agent is going to have that kind of knowledge. Uh, like for example, there's uh, some cities um, in uh, San Mateo County where they still do trick-or-treating safe streets, right? Mm -hmm. And so a local agent would know that versus someone who maybe isn't from around here. Um, another really great, uh, I think a lot of information that people are looking for is like, what about schools? You know, how are the schools? How are the public schools? Mm -hmm. Are they any good? Um, what are the average test scores? A local agent will know this information. Okay, so I think that's uh, it makes all the difference in my opinion. Okay, um, and so do you have any other tips for us? Well, yes, I do. Actually, um, I think probably this is the most important tip is um, you've got to feel comfortable with your agent. Your agent is going to become like your friend mm -hmm. and or maybe an extended part of your family, you've got to trust them. They're going to learn a lot about you and your finances and about your wants and your needs and special things about your family. Uh, and you've got to feel comfortable with them because they're going to know a lot about you. In my opinion, um, purchasing a, a home to live in is a very uh, intimate experience. So you, I think you've got to like the, the people or the person that you're working with. I think it makes a huge difference in the process itself. So being comfortable is key. Hmm. Were you comfortable working with me? <laughs> For the most part, yes. <laughs> I, I feel like um, you weren't comfortable working with me because I like knew where you lived and I had all your phone numbers and all your email addresses. And, right, right. And I was the same buying my first place. I was very nervous. I know, I know. And I think too, a really great agent will really set up the whole process in a way that's um, not too scary for most people. So, but yeah, so those are the three best tips that I have. But of course, if you'd like more information, what should they do? Well, they uh, can contact us. Uh, they can message us in the chat box or uh, visit us on Twitter. I think your handle is at BHG Debbie Wong and mine is at Marla Wong. And um, if you have any questions for us or want to know any more information about choosing an agent, you can always uh, comment in the box below and don't forget to hit subscribe so that you don't miss any of our latest episodes. Wonderful. Great. And of course, if there's an episode that you'd like to know or have us do a podcast on, please message us that information as well. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Okay. Stay safe until we see each other again. Bye-bye.